Hello, and welcome to the Demoet series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. Demoets are brief instructional videos that demonstrate specific features of TDV. In this Demoet, we discuss cache index management. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining cache index management and outlining its importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of cache index management. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoette. Let's begin by discussing what cache index management is and why it is important for our customers. When indexes are created on cache targets, they can often improve read response times for cached data. Indexes can be created on both cached views and cached procedures. They can be used in both single table and multi table caches. They are used in both full refresh and incremental refresh scenarios. Cache index management is important to our customers in many use cases. There are three specific ways that index management can make caches more efficient. First, an indexed cache can reduce read times for data consumers. Second, if indexes are dropped prior to a cache refresh operation, the refresh can run more quickly. Third, if stale cache data is deleted prior to index recreation, the index can be recreated more quickly and efficiently. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo that shows the use of cache index management. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. We'll examine three use cases. We'll cache data from a physical data source to three different caches. On each cache, we'll use a different approach to index management and examine the pros and cons of each approach. In order to use this demo, you must have a working knowledge of single table and multi table database caching. If you need a refresher, Demoets on these topics are available. This demo requires significant setup. You can easily build the resources from scratch. For our physical data source, we use a table on a Microsoft SQL Server database. This table contains approximately 41,000 rows. Of course, you may use any data from any data source. We create four simple identical views against this table. One view is not cached. A second view is cached to a single table cache and used to illustrate manual index creation. A third view uses single table caching to illustrate index management via TDV scripting. A fourth view is cached to a multi table cache and used to illustrate multi table index management. Our cache target for this demo is a Microsoft SQL Server database. You may use any supported database. This demo uses two packaged queries and two SQL scripts. We'll be looking at them in detail as we proceed through the demo. Now we are ready to begin our demo. Our first use case is very simple. Create a single table cache on a view. Now use the native database tools to create an index. Here we use Microsoft's SQL Server Management Studio to define an index and verify its existence. Let's consider the pros and cons of this approach. It is beneficial because it is very easy to set up and requires virtually no maintenance. Whenever the cache is refreshed, the DBMS will automatically update the index as the new data is added and the previous rows are deleted. However, this permanent index can lead to inefficiency at cache refresh time for two reasons. First, the index must be updated in real time as new rows are added. This can slow down the cache refresh process. Second, remember that rows from the previous cache contents are not deleted until the new cache data is loaded and all transactions using the old data are complete. That means that the index must also update itself as the old rows are deleted, which can also lead to inefficiency and higher resource usage on the DBMS. For these reasons, manual index management is most appropriate when caches are fairly small and when ease of use trumps high performance. Now let's look at our second use case, 
single table caching with index management scripts. To begin, create a single table cache. Just as before, we are using SQL Server as our cache target. Before we look at the scripting, let's get a baseline cache running. Load the cache and make sure it is up. Now we'll use SQL Server Management Studio to do a one-time creation of the index. The column I want to index in this view is named PK. Notice though that I must also use the cache key column as part of my index. In single table caching, the cache key column is used to distinguish between rows from the current and previous cache refresh operations. If I omit the cache key column, I'll lose the efficiency of the index because TDV prepends the correct cache key to every read request. Now that the basic single table cache is working, we can think about managing indexes with scripts. My goal is to drop the index prior to a cache refresh and then recreate the index after the cache refresh completes. These two operations are shown here in TDV packaged queries. Packaged queries must return a result set, so we create a dummy result set for each. This creates a problem for automatic single table indexing, however. The pre and post refresh scripts we use for single table caching must not return any data. To solve this problem, we simply wrap the packaged queries in SQL scripts that don't return any data. Now we add the scripts on the advanced panel of the cached view. When the view is subsequently refreshed, the pre-refreshed script will execute first, dropping the index on the cache table. Next, the cache refreshes. This refresh should run more quickly than before because there is no index to be updated as new rows are added. When the refresh operation is complete, the post-refresh script runs. This script creates the index, which can now be built without any impact on the data load. Let's examine the pros and cons of this approach. Pre and post refresh scripting can lead to faster cache refresh times because the index does not need to be maintained during the loading process. Packaged queries give the TDV developer a high degree of control over the operations that take place. However, Note that this approach may not lead to high efficiency when the index is recreated after the data load. Remember that at the moment the new cache data reaches up status, the old rows will still be present on the cache target table. These old rows, identified by the cache key column, will remain on the table until any currently running transactions that use them are complete. A delete command will then be issued for these stale rows, but this delete operation also takes time to complete. The presence of these rows will have some impact on the efficiency of the creation and maintenance of our new index. Therefore, single table caching is an appropriate choice when fast data loads are required, but the efficiency of index creation is less critical. It is also an appropriate choice when multi-table caching is not an option. For example, stored procedure caches cannot use multi-table caching. Finally, let's look at indexing for multi-table caches. For the vast majority of use cases, multi-table caching is the best approach to use when indexing is desired. Before setting up the cache, go to the Indexes tab on the view and define an index. Since multi-table indexing does not use a cache key column, we simply define the index using the column or columns we need from the view. Now go to the Caching tab and set up multi-table caching. Make sure the option to drop and recreate indexes is checked. Now simply load the cache as usual. No scripting is necessary. In SQL Server Management Studio, we see that indexes have been created for all of our multi-table caches. Whenever a cache is refreshed, TDV will ensure that indexes are dropped before the refresh and recreated after the refresh is complete. Let's examine the pros and cons of this approach. Multi-table caching makes cache refresh operations very efficient because existing indexes are dropped prior to cache refresh and recreated when the refresh is complete. 
Because multi-table caching does not have to deal with stale rows, it provides the most efficient approach to index recreation. Configuration and maintenance is extremely easy because no scripting is required. There are certain situations, though, where multi-table caching cannot be used. For example, stored procedure caches cannot use multi-table caching. In general, though, multi-table caching is the best choice when indexing is important for the use case. Let's summarize what we have seen in this presentation. When indexes are created on cache targets, they can often improve read response times for cached data. Indexes can be created on both cached views and cached procedures. They can be used in both single table and multi-table caches. They are used in both full refresh and incremental refresh scenarios. Cache index management is important to our customers in many use cases. There are three specific ways that index management can make caches more efficient. First, an indexed cache can reduce read times for data consumers. Second, if indexes are dropped prior to a cache refresh operation, the refresh can run more quickly. Third, if stale cache data is deleted prior to index recreation, the index can be recreated more quickly and efficiently. Thank you.